as I was coming out of high school and through college and that whole transition, I, I thought it was a big joke. I was not a wrestling fan. I never watched wrestling. Then I got my degree. I blew my knee. I was planning on being a football player, making big money. Since I lost my knee, I had to teach. I settled down with two children, a third one on the way, for $4,300 a year. But my friend was a big-time wrestling fan, and he talked me into calling Bert Ruby, who was a big-time wrestling promoter in Detroit at the time. I called Bert, and I, uh, at 2.30 in the morning, told him I wanted to be a wrestler. They were looking for somebody, so he invited me over the next day, and uh, he explained the wrestling business to me, what it was. We decided that I should wear a mask because I was a teacher and a coach, and that was my my drive and what I wanted to do. We, we put a name on it. I put a mask on. I wore a cap and gown, and uh, we uh, called me the student because I was learning the wrestling business. The animal. We never come up with the idea of calling me an animal. The crowd, the fans, because the hairy body in the annex started calling me an animal. So one day I'm doing the, a very articulate interview, and Vince says, Vince Jr. says, you're making too much sense for an animal, which kind of zinged me a little bit. So I'll show him. This is all TV, and it's taped. We can change it. So he sticks the mic in front of me, he says, and he asked me a question. I went, ah, 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 And it took me five minutes to answer his question. And I was really busting on him. This was kind of a rib. I got all done. I thought, well, he said, that's it. That's what I want. I went, oh, God. I uh, was known for two things, and this is crazy, it wasn't about wrestling. I was known uh, because I had a green tongue. The truth of the matter is, is I'd had a few drinks before a TV show, and I put some chlorettes in my mouth, didn't have a clue that my tongue was green, went out, did the TV show so the promoters wouldn't smell any booze on me, and when I come back, uh, the switchboard lit up. Why is his tongue green? Because this is back when TV was live. The following Friday, I went to the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, had these big green tongues hanging down all over the place, and I thought, God, this is cool. So about every two or three months, I would eat some chlorettes for a laugh. I'm a little slow. Uh, but then finally, I figured out every time I did that, I got this great reaction. So I started taking chlorettes before every match and making my tongue green. And what, the results of that was really the best uh, smelling breath in the wrestling, in the wrestling in industry. I had great breath. I wasn't much of a performer, maybe, but I did smell good. The turnbuckles uh, became a, a fetish of mine. And uh, it all started one day in Pittsburgh at a, uh, a, a small studio TV shoot. We, this is old school now we're talking about. We used to get about 200 people in a, in a studio, and uh, we had plywood around the outside with faces painted on it, 200 people sitting in front. And we'd give away things like glasses sometimes, and this particular time they give away pillows, thank God. And uh, the pillows were like these little couch pillows. And a lady got mad at me and, and threw one of her pillows at me. Well, I got the pillow, and not as stupid as I look, I knew that there was 200 more pillows out there, so if I threw the pillow back at her, that I'd have 200 pillows coming at me. If I sit on it, it was going to be a very boring match, so what are you going to do with the pillow? I took it, I bit it, ripped it apart, and this stuff just exploded out of it because this pillow was packed real tight. It's like one of those couch pillows, satin couch pillows. It was packed real tight, so the stuff blew up in the air. I took it, started throwing it, and stuck it in my hair. I looked like the abominable snowman. The place went nuts. And Tony Puglisi, Bruno San Martino's cousin, said, you know, maybe you could eat a turnbuckle. And we all just laughed at it. About two weeks later, I was wrestling with uh, Chief Jay Strongbow, and he was doing all of his antics. I was doing all of mine. The people were sitting on their hands. It was just not working. The match really wasn't getting it done. So I looked at the turnbuckle. I thought, I wonder. I went over took a bite. Ripped it open, boom, rubbed it in his face, the place went nuts, and it didn't take me three or four months to figure out that wasn't a bad thing to do. I started doing that every night. But my greatest advocate was my wife, because I had to learn all these maneuvers. And I put wrist locks on her and teach her how to put a hammer lock on me, and we reversed back and forth until I learned how to use all these crazy wrestling holes. And I got real good at using wrestling holes with my wife in the kitchen while she was trying to wash dishes. Get out of here, she'd tell me. But then I'd get in the ring with a guy like Bruno Sammartino, and all those holes went out the window. I would pound on Bruno. I was a brawler. I wasn't a wrestler. I'd kick his tail, and then all of a sudden he would start this stuff, and the Italians would start coming up, and, and all of a sudden it was a dangerous place to be. And I just, I, I feel pretty lucky, and I owe it all back to wrestling, and uh, things like a, a claim. They just keep popping up for me. I spend my time trying to help people. So many people in the world today are, are hurting and suffering in different ways, health-wise, financially, uh, People get up every morning and go to a job that they hate. They work with people that they don't like. They come home at night and drink a beer. They don't have time to hug their kids. I hope people get out of that syndrome, and I love it. 
I mean, I've, I've got so much that I want to give back and so many different ways that I can do it. And I owe so much because life of God has been so good to me. So that's where I'm at. You know what? Tonight, I acclaim anyone that wants to try me, come on down, Daddy, because it's the end of the line. You push the buttons and I win. Bye-bye.